All right, so what should the White House and the rest of America be prepared for when this report lands Thursday? We've got two top legal experts to help answer the questions. Former Watergate prosecutor John Sale and former independent counsel Ken Starr. Welcome to you both, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Judge, I'd like to start with you uh, because I know that you think that the Attorney General should actually stand up make a have a press conference or make a presentation have uh, deputy attorney general rod rosen sign with him and robert Mueller. any odds that he does something like that why do you think it would be helpful <laughs> hey i'm not a gambling uh, person shannon but uh, i'll tell you this uh, control the field of play uh, go on offense uh, bill barr has been handling this beautifully he's been going by the books he's abided by the regulations he's under this constant criticism, which is unfair, because he is obligated to redact uh, this mm -hmm. grand jury information, national security information, and so goes. So very briefly, we're about to enter a period of enormous frustration and acrimony. Why was this redacted? Okay, there's an explanation here. I don't like that explanation. I think it would be helpful in terms of public education and confidence in the administration of justice for the attorney general, who's very able, very honest, simply to explain, stand in the great hall of the Justice Department and say, here's what I did, here's the process we went through. I think it would be very helpful. All right. Well, we know one of the things that people are going to spar about, no matter what this report says, is this determination by the attorney general and Rod Rosenstein, he says, made together and with others within the Justice Department, that there wasn't an obstruction case. Now, the chair of the House Judiciary Committee, where impeachment, uh, ironically, would actually start, Jerry Nadler has this to say about getting that information. Mueller decided not to prosecute for obstruction of justice for various reasons, that there wasn't proof beyond a reasonable doubt of some things, but there still may have been proof of some very bad deeds and uh, very bad motives, and we need to see that, and the public needs to see that. Yeah, John, it seems like on that, that specific issue of obstruction that both sides are going to run with whatever they find there because the determination wasn't made by the special prosecutor himself. Well, I agree with Ken Starr, Judge Starr, no, that, that the criticism of the attorney general was completely unfair. Uh, he is doing exactly what the law requires. I mean, it's a media circus. The attorney general, the, the TV cameras are following him when he leaves his house in the morning. Uh, he's being criticized. He's being called a lackey for the president. He's going to follow his oath. He cannot release an unredacted version. Mm -hmm. The law would not permit it. He cannot release grand jury testimony. It is prohibited. But I think he's throwing an olive branch to the Congress. He said he'll try and work with them. He said he'll meet with the respective chairs mm -hmm. of the committees and he'll see what he can work out. And I think on Thursday, frankly, we could have a much different discussion. But now, I think we should just anticipate the attorney general will be as transparent as possible, like he said, but subject to the law. Mm -hmm. And that's what his oath requires him to do. Well, Congressman Adam Schiff, who chairs the House Intelligence Committee, a Democrat, says this. He tweeted a couple of days ago, if Barr and Rosenstein redact Mueller's report for Congress, it will be by choice, not legal compulsion. Rosenstein chose to give a GOP House nearly a million pages of discovery in Clinton and Russia probe, but they chose not to give 400 pages of Trump-related info to a Dem House. Now, Judge, I mean, that you know, people could argue about whether that is um, disingenuous or not, because... Certainly, the chairman knows that not everything can be thrown into the public sphere. I think that's exactly right. It's very unfortunate that this, but it's inevitable, has become so politicized. And Shannon, I think one of the takeaways here is why did we have a special counsel using a grand jury enshrouded in secrecy as it has to be to make this inquiry in the first place? Uh, we're reaping a very bitter harvest right now. Why didn't we follow uh, the Senate Select Committee and Watergate example? Why didn't we follow the 9-11 Commission? And I'm not talking about obstruction. I'm talking the alleged uh, obstruction. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about whether, in fact, there was collusion. The American people deserved and the president deserved uh, to know a year ago, 18 months ago, the answer to that basic fundamental question. Obstruction is derivative from this. And by the way, one person's view, I can't even understand the obstruction argument. There was no firing of Bob Mueller. There was no sealing off of his offices. That happened in Watergate. There was complete, as far as we know, cooperation with the investigation. 
uh, thousands of documents turned over to the investigation. The counsel to the president testified for 30 hours. This is honestly unheard of. So there was not only not obstruction, as I see it, given what we know, mm -hmm. uh, there was the antithesis obstruction. It was complete cooperation. Lots of nasty language but cooperation. Well, we'll see all of us on Thursday morning as this goes not only to Congress, but it goes public as well. Thank you both for helping us to have a preview tonight. Thank you.